Behind me is a pile of 13 cassette decks. This one makes 14. And uh, there's six to eight in the attic that still need testing. But let's start with the pile because it looks dangerously top heavy. So, yes, we have some very shitty sound. Is that because of dirty heads? I think it is. That should fix it a bit. Wow! How dirty is that head? Oh! Let's try the spit method again. That didn't do quite enough. Content organs. D series. There's are organs in this apparently. That's, uh, that's slightly gross. Um, not sure where that tape comes from, from. Where's my Louis Armstrong tape that I always use? Anyway, let's uh, copy some Nena briefly because music rights. And some high speed dubbing as well. That's my previous test. Uh, they are supposed to sound better, but actually, this thing works almost as intended. Let's uh, record from a source. Next up is this Akai HXA1. That's the simplest of the series. I've actually never seen this one in real life. Okay, it's not a keeper anyway, uh, because no knob. And these these are not supposed to be up there. It's supposed to be... Oh, something really bad happened to this one. Everything's sort of in there, skewed. I'm gonna take this off, so it's an easier eject. The whole mechanism seems slightly off. No sound though. Ah, oh, oh, waking up. Always fun when that happens. Running way too slow. Got to keep sound levels lowish because the neighbor goes to bed early. So other than that it runs slow and that the whole mechanism is somehow not where it should be. Still wondering how that happened. Uh, it's actually fine. I, I feel tempted to save it, but yeah. Next up is a Kenwood, and everyone who has seen my videos before knows that I'm not the biggest fan of Kenwood because I generally don't think they sound very good. The um, cassette decks, that is, they did make some great record players and amplifiers. Electronic eject, which is uh, almost working. Okay, not for now. This Technics has a missing knob again, which renders it useless for testing, but I'm still going to. It's on pause. Breaks over. Oh, you can't go directly to fast forward. The thing actually doesn't sound half bad, to be honest. Ooh, rewind's a bit slow. It's rather frustrating when a perfectly functional machine is missing a knob. I was about to say nothing else cheap as fuck like a plastic Sanzui, but then I figured out it's actually metal and it's bloody heavy. It's chill, still cheap, but... Ooh. I mean... Does it wind? Neither. That's a bit weird. Let's try this one then. Well... The record switch. Okay, we got signal, obviously. Although, record pause, there you go. Why don't I hear anything? This is so weird. It's running, it's not playing, it's winding, but it's doing something. Winding, winding, okay, okay, here we go. Yeah, winding. Winding, not playing. It's probably dead. This is a shot. It's already on. Sorry for that. That's how that switch is working. It has a DIN at the back, so it's a pretty old one. Ooh, okay. Only one reel turning. Yeah, the other reel is trying, but not succeeding. Let's try this way around. It winds fine, actually. 
So that reel, I'm not sure if you can see, not turning. So it's going to eat my tape if I keep it going. Which is weird because it winds fine. Sounds alright as well, by the way. Next. No light. And the sound sounds like there's no bell. Cap sounds turning. There is a bell. Wow, that's quick. That's not bad. And that doesn't work because pause. One channel. Ah, wait. Oh, jeez. Song over. Because, of course. Ooh. Ooh. -hoo. I present to you that capacitors, but did it record that? Or is it just doing that now? Okay. It's just doing that now. I, uh, I like it. I can't tell you why, but I like it. It's the Technics M205. I think it's one of those budget machines that everyone had back in the day. Um, and I can see why. It's very appealing, somehow. Moving forward in time, we've got ourselves a Sony. It's a double deck. That means uh, at least one of them is broken. Oh, told you. Uh, horrible sound. Isn't it impressive how the old ones work and this one just doesn't? Wow. Oh, for fuck's sake. <clears throat> um, I don't think it wants that. I also don't think I'm going to get my tape back. Yeah, so, no more uh, morning on the goof balloons. <sighs> I'll have to open it up and manually pull with the control wheel to get that tape back. So, yeah, there's that. Another one that's pointless to test because it's absolutely knackered, but we're still going to because entertainment value. Is this just long enough? No, it's not. Of course it's not. Actually, it's a pity it's missing this knob because this is a pretty machine. Doesn't sound too uh, healthy either. Let's see what's on this organ tape. It's semi running. I'm not sure there's any sound there, of course. I don't know what tape this is. Ooh, we have something. Organs, right. So there's, there's this Dolby noise reduction and there's a brilliance. Brilliant switch, brilliance out in. You can make, oh, that's not supposed to go like that, but you can make all the lights flicker. Don't eat my Q-tip. Thank you. Let's see if the organ is any better now. I would say no, but then I don't know what this tape is supposed to sound like, so let's get the beat up Louis Armstrong tape and see what that does. Okay, let's record this uh, solo. A three, a two, a one. There you go, two channels. Let's try brilliance. Right, since my predictions never work, I'm just going to say this one is probably going to be broken. I already noticed a loose screw. I sh shouldn't even hook this one up to the audio actually, but I'm still going to, because wishful thinking. Let's uh, see what Louis has to say. Where's eject? Ooh, very subtle. I love how it's like, th 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 this is like the right deck that's actually already playing. The left deck, they are in no way alike, like it's a completely different set of controls. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen this one. <laughs> They both look like they've given up on life. I don't think I've ever seen this one before, to be honest. It'd be working! Hey, no views! That's a weird machine. Okay, so does this play as well? Very well, if I say so myself. Um, dubbing? Oh. Okay. I wonder if it is dubbing now. That was one switch, did you see? I've just pressed dubbing and everything started working. Okay, then let's stop. Okay, I should have pressed stop there. Very faint. 
So, once more, if I press dubbing here, look. That's kind of cool. Ooh. Oh, wait, that's a lot better. Still shit, but it's a lot better. I don't know, I may try to fix this one up out of curiosity value, because it looks really pretty still. It's a really weird design with like the two completely different halves. Controls, controls. They could have made it the same. Pretty much all of the, they are in the same spot, but they didn't. It's almost like they put something over it here. It's a separate panel, you can actually move it around, wiggle it a bit, see? I have no idea what their thoughts were. But I'm digging it. Remember that Akai we started this video with? It's pretty much the same machine, only a little older. No! You're kidding. Because these usually work. Let's try and wake it up with some... Um... Wait, I need to swap the tape now. With some high-speed dubbing. See if that wakes the motor up. Play, and... Actually it does. I can hear the motor now. So it's not the motor that's not running. It got a real turning. We got a cap stand turning. I'm telling you, these are never dead. But this is sad. Told ya. It's not a happy camper, but there is some music coming out. Let, let's try record while we're at it. There we go. There we go. Someone's waking up. Yeah, actually sounds fine, it just needs really badly, needs a new belt and it's very greasy and grimy. Not sure where this thing has been either, but uh, I think part of the problem is just grease and stickiness and not even the machine itself. Now, I think the two most underrated cassette deck brands are JVC and Iowa. JVC has actually some decks that outperform uh, Nakamishi's. Iowa mm, doesn't quite get there, but... Um, yeah, there's something to be said for the brand. They are generally reliable. They sound much better than you think for the price, especially the cheap ones like this one. Okay, that's a bit weird. Is that coming from the laptop? And I probably switched line in and out around. Yes, I did. No scratching pots or nothing. Only thing that doesn't work is the counter. Ooh, and rewind is uh, not ha not happy, not happy to rewind. You can do it, you can do it. Actually, you can't. Let's try uh, inverse rewind then. Ah, oh, oh, there we go. Oh, yeah, it's trying. Biasing. And balance. AKA, if you let this one run for an afternoon, it's gonna be good as new. Looks good too. I mean, good as in no damage. I wouldn't say it's pretty. Also, it's very empty. I like Iowa. They never disappoint. Sorry to inform you guys that I can't test this, test this one right now because it has no power lead. But it's a Harman Kardon a TD4200 cassette deck. It's got balance, got biasing, soft touch controls. Looks alright. Yeah, these tend to steal tape. So if this one steals this tape, I'm down another testing tape. So let's try this first. Oh. Why do people buy Sony? Let's stop this now because it will steal my tape. It's actually exactly what I was afraid of, that it might do. I don't know why these machines are so bad. They're not even at all. Head stack doesn't come up properly. Yeah, no, yeah. see? That was, uh, that was bound to happen. Oh, come on. Oh, God. Yeah, there you go. I'm just helping the mechanism here. Pieces of junk. Turns out there were seven decks in the attic that still needed testing, so that brings us to a grand total of 21 machines in this video. Seems like a reasonable amount. That's not an awful lot. That's so little that I'm either... Oh, I was expecting smoke, but I think I just didn't plug in the wire. Here we go. Ah, interesting for use. Loads of chorus. Welcome to the 80s. Just noticed a massive dent here, so I think this one... Had a bit of an accident at some point. Not sure if you can see. This is all warped. This one's dead. 
So sad, it's such a cool machine. It's a Technix, um, yeah, RSB405. And I would have loved to, uh, to see this one play with its cool views and I go up to plus 18 and minus 40, which is a nice range actually. So someone uh, took off the plug of this really cool Iowa as well. Uh, and I thought I'd just put a plug on it because it still had a bit of wire left, but uh, I have no plug. So what I just did is uh, plug it straight, the wires, into this um, extension box, power strip. And I just plugged a plug into it in order to make the child uh, safety lock not work. And yeah, I uh, turned off all the power, so let's see if it goes dark again when I turn it on. Because right now it's dark because I turned it off. Ooh. My system failed. So I uh, just upped the dangerous by one step. And uh, yeah, don't ask me what I did. It's, it's, it's working. And if you can't see because it's hidden behind the deck, that's for the best. D wow. Oof. Don't try this at home, kids. Okay, I don't think I hooked up the audio yet, which is shitty because I don't want to move this one around too much. Because that trap. This being an IWA, of course it works flawlessly. Fast forward, rewind, play. And you dig on that. Auto reverse. Yep, that's IWA for you. Look at this. How cool is that? So, what have we got? Dolby, B and Z. And. Uh, it's got uh, automatic tape uh, thingy, now it's on metal, now it's on silver metal, huh. because the switches are dirty, which they always tend to be. Uh, this is an easy fix though. That is actually cool, it's right. Uh, so this should be fair again. There you go. Let's, uh, let's try recording. I expect this one to work, but I may be wrong. Ah. Yeah, that has got a buzz when it's in the middle. Hmm. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I just I have all the faith in the, in the Iowa, so I just expect this thing to work. I'm not gonna lie though, it doesn't sound great uh, straight through the machine. Not the best sounding electronics, or maybe it just needs to wake up. There you go. Plus 10 dB. The views are a tad optimistic and that's a bit sad. The photo reflector reverse sensor, there you go. So that's why it's quick reverse. It actually senses the, um, the end of the um, uh, brown part of the tape rather than actually the end of the tape. That, that's right. Yeah. That doesn't work, does it? <laughs> no, that that's the end of the tape. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so system's cool. Let's try once more, maybe with a little bit of a lead. There you go. Did you see? It actually didn't get to the end of the tape. See? It just senses the, the brighter bit and then it goes click. So it does work, you should, just shouldn't put it right at the end of the tape. Cool stuff. And just when you think that, that Iowa had a weird design, please welcome this absolutely mad Rotel. So we got, okay, a limiter, which is actually quite useful. I like that. Uh, except you can't set it, I fear. Who knows? Um, memory and full auto stop. Memory. This is, I think, the memory system. Uh, it's also a slot loading machine, so I don't want to lose my tape, so let's just start with the organ one. Something is happening, probably just eating my tape. But it actually hurts quite bad, pressing this. Can I just get another one, maybe? There you go. Uh. Can I wake something up, or are the belts just completely gone? Let's see if we can get a, a bit of sound from this. Um, yeah, it will give me back the tape, I know now. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa! I didn't see them moving. It probably did that before as well. It doesn't wind. Does it eat my tape? No, it doesn't. 
Now let's try... Oh god, we got some input. This is not great. Okay, I'm not sure what's causing the distortion right now. Probably the record switch that now won't budge. Yeah, it's probably the record switch. Whoa, that's not supposed to get this much line level, but there we go. Look at that! <laughs> Counter reset, because we know it. Oh, for fuck's sake. I mean, it's running now, actually. What does this limiter do? Yep, see? It just gives you a maximum of plus 3 dBs, actually. See? I like that. Okay, I don't have the perfect type of big pen, but this should work. Here we go. That's rewind for you. The only way to do it. There's an extra dim connector on the front. How far did I rewind this thing? Here we go. Listen to that. So, it does need new belts, obviously. I mean, here it rattled. But... This reminds me of old Grundig. Reel to reels. They had a stop switch like this. God. It's so cool. We are back to mainstream stuff. In this case, it's a Philips double deck with two of its four feet, which makes it, uh, yeah, wobbly. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. You know, we had a ball making that picture with How do you Clark switch the Dolby off? And Miss Kelly attacks the whole cast were great. I wrote them a letter and thought they was great actors. I told them almost. Okay, okay. It's weird how it has a, a swear. Uh, a button that says change side instead of a second play button, which to me is more logical. Ooh. Almost finished my man, man. Oh. Okay, so that ain't working. Let's see. Ooh. 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 What's going wrong there? And on high speed? Oh. Okay, so we... Okay, th I fixed it. Uh, top, and let's try fast dubbing. Oh, it does that without sound. If it does it at all, I don't know. Ooh, oh, some equalizing is going on there, and it's not pretty. Uh, I just don't feel any love for these machines. I don't know why, the whole 900 series to me is... Absolutely overrated, but it works, it dubs, sort of winds, and it wobbles. With uh, past experiences, I'm just going to turn this one on first and see what it... Thank you! Are you going to eat my tape now too, I wonder? Uh. Sony, why are you so shit? It's a soft touch TI, which to me means it's going to be quite good if it works. The cap stand, cap stands, don't run, unsurprisingly. I don't think this is going to do very much, but let's shut it up. So everything works except the cap stand motor is running free, which it shouldn't. And why does it do that when I press stop? <laughs> I love how it tries to reverse. Is it even auto-reverse? Yes. Oh! It's a TX R666 X. I have to fix this one now because, you know. Um, so, it has weird, weird moments it wants to run. A little less light, please. God, that's noisy. It sounds like a big motor, though. Ooh, peak LEDs! Or just some broken views, that could be it too. No, there's just a few broken. Wait. 
And last but not least, this is a good old Akai, proper 70s machine, it's already on. It's not the one I already tested in one of my previous videos, that was a, one, a 706 I think, and this is a 709. These tend to not work until you give them some time and then they tend to actually work. So let's see how this one does. That's the thing, it just has to, you know, it's actually running, but it's still waking up. Stop squeaking, start squeaking again. We've got rewind, it's rewinding slowly, but it is. Not sure if you can see, I don't think so. I have to hold it down halfway. Okay, now I can let go. It is rewinding. It's just stopped rewinding, of course. Nice to use. Give it a little less input because it's an oldie. Here we go. Come on, clean the pots. Here we go. Give us two proper channels. There we are. Nice. So let's see. Oh, you can do it. You can do a rewind. You've done it before. Ooh, I think this switch may be an issue as well. This one's dirty too, you can feel. Okay, and then there's this, of course, and there's this. It's all in the way, and then there's all these that can mess it up. You can see the plus seven peak every now and then. Let's see if it still does that with limiter on. It does actually. It's not the most aggressive limiter. Let's see. We got some sort of rewind again. It's getting better. There you go. It obviously needs love, but this is the oldest machine of all these so far, and it just works, and that's thoroughly impressive. I'm a different person in the night time. This is just impressive. I kind of did a good thing with their uh, cassette decks back in the day. They sound good, they work well, they're reliable as fuck. Um, I think if you look through all my videos, you'll find that they often do work. And uh, yeah, good machine. I just wish I could get my radar tape back. Hmm.